I've heard the boss on Slack earlier, or seen him, so I'm sure he's just late. Hey guys, one sec. We missed you. <laughs> hey Clemens. Uh, it's rough when you're just from going from meeting to meeting to meeting and you actually are running them. You know, it's, you can't just walk away. Hmm. Oops. All right. Slinky developer, that's Francesco, is that right? Yeah, it's me. Oh, cool, I got that right. I probably misspelled it, but I got it right in my head anyway. Hold on a sec. Do, 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 do. Serverless. I think that's the right one. Whoops. I apologize, I don't have an external monitor today, so I won't be able to watch the chat as closely as I normally do. All right, hi, Heinz. Hello. Hello, and Christian, are you there? Yep. Hello, Scott. Dog, 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 dog. There you go. Tommy, where's your message? I don't see it in Zoom yet in the chat. And let's see, who else? Vlad, are you there? I'm here, hi. Hello, hey, Ginger? Uh, good morning, Doug. Good morning. Um, and then, hold on, there's a couple other people that joined. Hey, Tommy. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see, Mike, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Or somebody else. Vinay? I'm, I'm, I apologize if I'm butchering that. Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I was just going to say this is my first meeting. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for joining. Um, what company are you with, by the way? I'm with Palo Alto Networks. And Palo Alto? The, yeah. Okay. I'm happy to do an introduction at some point if that's helpful. No, we don't get that formal here. Just the only, <laughs> the only reason I was asking was because we keep attendance and it's usually based upon company. So I just like to keep track of that. But thank you for joining. Thank you. Okay. It actually might be a really short call today. I'm sure everybody would be very upset by that. 
Hey, Eric. Eric, are you there? Hey, sorry. Oh, there we go. Hey, there we go. No problem. Hey. How's it going? Uh, other than that, I'm having a great morning. <laughs> Same <laughs> for you. Cool. Um, doo -doo -doo. Hey, Ryan. Hello. Hey. Hmm. All right, give it another minute, then we'll get started. All right, so it's three after the bottom, we go ahead and get started. And let's see. <clears throat> you guys can't see my window, right? Yes, no? We can. Yes. Yeah. OK, cool. OK, cool. Just want to make sure. All right. Uh, nothing new with AIs, I believe. Community time. OK, anything from the community that people want to bring up? That's not on the agenda. All right, cool. All right, KubeCon EU. <laughs> um, first of all, I don't know if anybody's been paying attention, but last I heard, the conference organizers will are still planning on having the conference despite the the virus and all the other stuff running around. Um, so it is still on as far as I know. Um, so some local color. Say that again. So I have some local color on this. Um, sure, go for I, it. So I live very close to the Dutch border, and we have a there's a uh, my neighbor and district um, is the one that is uh, cur currently causing all the noise. For uh, for Germany and is right by the Dutch border, so it's I don't want to make you any, anybody panicky, but it's it's not, it's not so unlikely that this is going to jump into the Netherlands and is also going to jump into into my district and then who got God who knows what's going to happen then in terms of just you know panic reaction of uh, of the official. So I, I'm currently fifty fifty of this happening. <laughs> It, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. That is definitely for sure. Yes. So, all right. And no, no shaking hands with anybody. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I was at a conference earlier this week up in New York, and that's one of the first things that ran through my mind was, you know, how do I politely say, sorry, I'm not going to shake your hand. And unfortunately, I, I gave into it and actually did shake two people's hands, but we'll see. <laughs> it, it's hard not to, but I will say for um, our project booth, when we, <clears throat> excuse me, when we do project booths, I always put hand sanitizer at our booth ah. so everybody can use it. I don't care if you're a you know visitor or if you're a you know maintainer, but I always have hand sanitizer at the booth. Probably a good idea. Yep. It's always the elbow bump. Go ahead, sorry. The elbow bump? Yeah. <laughs> well I was thinking fist bump, but yeah, I like elbow bumps because usually you have some clothing that, you know <laughs> Exactly. Although, uh, okay, we're really digressing here, but now I'm starting to think of the uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, but maybe that's going way too far. So never mind. Um, okay, uh, but speaking of booths, uh, we did get confirmation that we have a booth reserved for us. It's booth 11. If you click on that link, you can actually see more information about what the other booths are doing if you're interested. Um, we are in the afternoon sessions for all three days. So please, if you are able to sign up for some booth times by putting your name in here. Um, I did add when the two sessions are, just so you guys have that for easy reference in case you were planning on um, uh, speaking one of those or joining one of those. So for example, I think Scott's, no, I think it's Scott's uh, session on Wednesday uh, might require s several people because um, it's a more of a lab kind of thing and he wants people to help out there. So um, think about that as you go forward. But anyway, please add your names when you get a chance. Um, also, when you're talking about the booth, this is the text that they gave me. Uh, the most interesting thing here is to make sure that you do not talk about products there. Um, that, that's a, I think that's an obvious thing. You should talk about the technology and the spec itself. Um, but if, with the interesting thing to me was uh, this little bit right here where they said, you know, if they hear you're doing a sales pitch, you know, they, write, they reserve the right to kick you out, which I thought was kind of interesting, which makes sense, but it, it does seem kind of brutal. So keep that in mind if you are signing up for booth duty. Okay, um, 
I think I'm trying to think if there's anything else here. No, I think everything else is old news. So any other questions or comments relative to KubeCon? Can you share this document? Uh, oh, Doug? yes. I'm sorry. Please? Yes. No, that's what, no worries. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, there is the link right there. Uh, in, in the can, I, can I just make a quick comment? Um, Please, yes. So hello, uh, I'm Jonathan. So people call me Jojo. And I'm very interested in serverless, like the open source serverless platform. And I'd like to my first meeting of the working group for serverless. So just introducing myself for my first time here. I'm going to be at KubeCon. I'm going to be speaking at the rejects about open source serverless as well. So just want to join uh, what's happening on the CNCF serverless working group. So just Great. saying hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi and welcome. Glad you can join us. I think you're, this, you. you're the other person. Uh, Vinay was as new as here as well today. So we got two newcomers, which is, oh, actually there's a third person. I S U R U. Would you like to introduce yourself since we're in that mode right now? Isaru? Uh, hi, guys. Yeah, actually, I'm uh, just interested about this uh, community. So just thought of coming and see. So this is my first visit here. Hi. Hey, well, welcome. Um, if you can do me a favor and just put um, your full name and your company name, if you want to be associated with a company, into the Zoom chat. And that, that way I can add it to the attendee list. And we, and we do track these things for, uh, for voting rights and stuff like that. OK? OK. Thank you. Um, all right. Hold on. Jeez. So I don't forget. All right. OK, moving forward. KubeCon we're done with. Um, OK, SDK call. So we did not have a call last week or the week before. So I don't, I don't think there's anything to mention other than I did create the Rust repo. And the folks um, are currently working on doing that merging <clears throat> of those two Rust projects that are out there today. Um, I'm assuming, even though we didn't take an official vote, is there any objection to us pulling them in as a, as a new SDK repo? Okay, I didn't think so, because no one raised an objection before, but I know we didn't do a formal vote, so I just want to make that official. Uh, we do technically, or I'm sorry, we are supposed to have a call today, so immediately after this call, we'll have the SDK call. Um, unfortunately, if the call runs past the top of the hour, I will not be able to join it. So someone else will have to be a note taker at that point. Just a warning for a quick call. Uh, let's see, Kathy is not on the call, I believe. Do we have anybody else from the workflow subgroup who wants to give status? I don't see anybody. Okay, um, moving forward then, let's talk about discovery APIs. So Clemens, let me pick on you to go first since I think you said you need to leave her a little bit early. Maybe you can bring us up to date on anything that might have happened, even though I think you're on vacation. Um, yes, so we've had two things that we added. Uh, Klaus uh, did some homework um, and, uh, um, hang on, let me see. Yeah, where do you want me to scroll to? Uh, and Colin, Colin did some homework. Uh, go a little bit further down um, to the sections where we have the configurations for the transports. A little, little bit further down. Okay, there. Oh, this section, um, okay. Yeah, so um, Colin added uh, further information we need for NATS. So that's the, the, the subject name, uh, the quas modes, um, pull mode, which really well this pull push, and then the acknowledgement mode, which are all client side configurable settings. Um, that kind of echoes similar settings that we have in AP, MQT. And then for MQP, we. Um, Klaus contributed that. We then talked about that in some a little bit more detail, um, and um, we're fairly happy with that set. And then we also added uh, the HTTP uh, things, which are all and all of these are effectively transport-specific configuration parameters for pushing out. So you have a subscription manager. The subscription manager is tasked with taking an event and moving that elsewhere. Um, push, and so that these are the parameters for the respective transports that we have in cloud events um, as standard transports. So we're going to go and configure those, and of course every implementation, if that wants to support a, a proprietary protocol, um, can add their own as much as you can add your own transport bindings um, to cloud event in a proprietary fashion if you wanted to. So those are the ones, the protocols that we have in the in the set. So that that's what that is. 
Um, and then um, Ryan had um, a proposal that he has not put into this document yet, but that's the plan for filtering. Um, and uh, we've and he's got some some variations of this. Ryan, um, are you on? I am. Yes. Uh, do you want Do you want to show that doc? Um. <laughs> Coincidentally, I was my laptop was forced into an update right before this meeting, so I'm on my Ouch. phone right now. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but I do plan to uh, um, I do plan to put it in the doc um, either today or tomorrow, um, okay. and we can cover. Okay, so I'll I will I will just talk I will just talk about it briefly. Um, so we have we we thought about what what an initial filter, and so this filter is really for. Let's back out once, um, also because I, I wrote email to Heinz uh, earlier, based on, um, and he had a lengthy, lengthy email to me. Um, but just to reiterate, the di difference we make here between push and pull is really these pull style, pull style, style subscriptions are meant to be using the capabilities of whatever broker you already have. So. You know, if you're using MQP, you go and create a subscription uh, of sorts and then pull data towards you with MQTT, you have a subscribe gesture. And again, you pull events towards you on that same connection, so that's what pull means. And of course, if you're choosing MQTT, there's a certain set of filtering capabilities that exists in that broker. And if you use MQP, then there's a certain set of filtering capabilities that exist in that broker. May they be standardized or may they be custom. And so we're not gonna to touch those. And, and it's really like, if you use any of that sort of infrastructure, you're effectively compliant with this subscription model because you're using native capabilities of a broker. And I don't think we need to go in and start standardizing into MQP and we don't need to start standardizing into MQTT because people who are using these sorts of brokers know what they're doing. Now, what, what's different is, is if we create relationships that kind of have these multi-hop deliveries where you might, you might want to get, um, you might want to deliver to MQTT clients, um, which you need to pull from an MQTT broker, but somehow you need to get that event into that MQTT broker. And that is the sort of subscription um, that we're covering here. So you're creating a, a route, a push route effectively from some subscription manager into that MQTT broker the event that gets delivered into the MQTT broker, and then the MQTT clients basically use MQTT ways of, of getting of getting to that. So, so the filter definitions that we make here are really for only for that push delivery path and for allowing the subscription manager to, to decide which which events that it gets be, are eligible for delivery on a particular subscription. So that's what that's for, and the minimal filter that we're defining um, per Ryan's proposal is one where we have um, an AND combination of subject, source, um, and type. And you can match against, against those values either with suffix or with prefix or with an exact match. And those three um, elements are combined with AND. Um, and, and the fact you can only use three is that it, it's, it's, it's somewhat nonsensical to have the same condition for the same field twice in an AND combination because that will likely not, not work. Um, you could arguably do a prefix and a suffix filter for um, the subject field. That's, that's possible. Um, but that's the simplest set. So that's the simplest filter basically just anchors on those three fields. And then, so that's the basic, that's what we call the simple dialect. And then we will have extended dialects, or we're proposing that there might be extended dialects, which then also allow, you know, matching against arbitrary other um, properties. Um, but based on implementation ex experience that we have, and then also that Ryan has, is that they have, um, because of cost of, of this matching, we want to keep the simplest filter really simple and, and super constrained. Um, and that's the thing that everybody must implement effectively to be compliant. And then we'll leave effectively the definition of further dialects to 
extensions similar to the way how we've done extensions for for cloud events per se. So if someone wants to wants to come and say, we're we're gonna we're gonna uh, define a SQL dialect to match cloud events. That's great. Uh, and the way this and the way this ought to show up, um, how the the filter dialects are being communicated is that in the we're assuming that in the discovery API, there will be um, at where the subscription managers or the sub subscription points are being listed. Um, that there is already a metadata indication that says here are the filters that are supported. So there's a, there's effectively a capability negotiation uh, happening where where you must define you must su support si simple, but then you can also if there was a dialect that was called SQL um, that you can then uh, already see from the the discovery metadata. Um, that the SQL that dialect is supported, and that you can then go and instantly create a SQL filtered condition and uh, and walk up to the subscription endpoint, and that will then be accepted. So that's the that's the idea we have about this. So multiple dialects, and there's some negotiation happening through ways of uh, discovery, and we might have a discovery mechanism for HTTP as well. We haven't thought about how this looks in HTTP just yet. Um, at the protocol level, but I can imagine that we're going to have a potentially an options extension where you can basically walk up to the, the subscription manager endpoint, do an options request, and then you get a header with all the supported um, um, dialects um, for for subscriptions, which is similar to how MQP, for instance, would do it. That's what we had. That's what we are so far in terms of of getting to a complete draft. Um, I think this section is relatively good in shape. I don't. I don't know how, Doug. What's your idea for how the? Um, uh, I mean, there's stuff missing, but um, d did you think we should need to break this out into a separate document? Do we leave that section in that document? How do you think we should do this? Um, I don't have an opinion yet, yet about separate documents. Oh, there's a bad echo. Um, um, it, it might, might be you comments. Maybe you can mute while I'm talking. Yeah, sorry. It's my... Okay, yeah, that's better, thank you. I don't care necessarily about separate documents yet. I guess what I'm more looking for is to make sure that the text in here is more speckish, right? So for example, this section right here, while I understand the, the most critical thing is to just get the information that you, or get the bits that you want to have specified, um, but putting that into specky language so it's more readable, I think, um, is, is really what I'm looking for more than anything else. That way someone can, we can hand this to somebody and say, hey, here's a rough draft, you know, start commenting on it as opposed to, you know, when they look at this section right now, they may look at this and not be 100% sure what they're supposed to do with these things. That's, that's, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, so I think we need to do a, a, a solid edit pass um, on this. And there's also kind of a bunch of comments on the side of this. Yes. Um, so do we think this should go as a, we should turn this into, into markup and put that into the repo? I'd like to, but I'd like, it's up to you guys when we do it. I was assuming that we'd do it when you felt like you were past the stage of sort of like daily edits. Um, and it, and because the minute you put it into the repo, then we have to go to a PR process, right? Or something like that, which is gonna slow things down immensely. Um, so it, um, it's, it's kind of up to you guys. No, it's fine. Um, uh, let's, let's, so Ryan um, is going to put the filter section in um, and then we'll, um, we'll talk on Tuesday what we think what the editing process will, will be and then um, at least we have a roadmap for, for how we're going to land there. Okay. Because, cool. because like I could now say I'm going to take the pen, I'm going to do it, but um, we should go and decide that as a group and then probably also split up the work and also figure out how we're going to do, do the, the mutual review. Um, and we also, I think we need to take the, take the text out of this document because it's a little unwieldy to have um, you approve every single edit. Yeah, I, and I apologize for not being on it. I've been very, very busy in traveling. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah but that, that, that's okay. What we, we basically need to go, and go and take the text, we need to take the text out and need yeah. to uh, move that to a different doc. So I'll, I'll take that, we'll, we'll do that on, we'll talk about that on Tuesday. Okay. Right. Any questions for Clemens or that sub team? 
I, I'm still concerned about the having suffix filtering be a requirement by default. I'm fine with that being optional, but I just worry about the implementation costs. Um, are you worried about prefix? No, prefix is much more efficient to implement. Yeah, I think what we, uh, one of the, the key use cases for that is if you are doing something that is like, like files, um, and you want to grab um, the the file type by extension, which is fairly common, um, then you need to have a suffix. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not questioning utility. I'm just in implementation costs forcing everybody to have that in has a cost associated, and we should be aware of it if we're asking people to yeah. take it. Yeah, that's that's why we're already trying to constrain this to three to three elements. But. Yeah, we, we, we can still go and discuss that. I'm I'm not I don't think we're 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 final on this. We, we it might be that the simplest thing that we're gonna do is an exact match. Yep. All right, cool. Any other questions, comments? Okay, cool. Thank you, Clemens. Hopefully Thank your you. wife is with that I will ha I'll have to excuse myself for the rest yes. of the call. Apologize to your wife for us. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Mike. You're up. Anything you want to discuss? I know you were on vacation as well, unfortunately. Yeah, I was also on vacation and uh, uh, came back to a pile of work that I wasn't expecting. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to need another week to get the discovery um, into a more uh, first drafty kind of state. Um, if you have any, I just couple, couple of people added comments to the doc while I was gone. It's great. Um, if anybody wants to actively participate, reach out to me on Slack or speak up now. Otherwise, I will probably draft this um, either later today or tomorrow and send it out. Uh, I'll, I'll post it in the Slack channel when it's ready. Okay. Any questions or comments for Mike? All right. Cool. And welcome back. I hope you had fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, Doug. Sorry. This is Brian. I was just oh, muted. Um, yeah, go ahead, Brian. Uh, so, so there is some alignment that needs to happen between the two, uh, the subscription section around how filters are advertised uh, and how uh, that negotiation happens with discovery. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, I'm happy to, to join for a session there to talk about it or um, maybe we can just revisit it once we get this in better shape and come back as a larger group. What, what are your thoughts? Mike, you have any thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I can certainly base discovery off of what I see here in subscriptions. Do you think that's a good starting point? Sure. Yeah. If you're comfortable doing that, um, uh, or if you, know, you want one of us to join, just let us know. Okay. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Anything else relative to the new spec before we move on to the agenda? All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, okay. So we have a couple PRs relative to cloud events. Um, I'm trying to read the status of this one. I know it was recently updated. Let me just double check here. So Klaus, you've actually taken a look at this one. Actually, I'm sorry. We talked about this, I think, um, on last week's, or I'm sorry, the last phone call we had. And for the most part, it looked okay, but then Jim had a comment and the author did update the spec or his, his changes based upon that comment. I think he just moved things around slightly or, or changed some URL. But then Klaus, you actually took a look at it. Um, just, is it everything look okay? At the sim uh, single attribute here the, about the constant encoding, because that was about a remark I did in another issue in the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, JSON schema allows to, to uh, specify the encoding and for uh, data base 64, it was clear that it is Base 64 encoded, so that was my remark to add that. Okay, and he, I assume he did that to your satisfaction, which is why he did LGTM, right? Yes, so I didn't okay. um, review closely the whole structure of the JSON schema, but just that this single field was added. Right, okay. Does anybody, I just wanna check something here. So that last little change or uh, was done, I don't know if it was done two days ago. Yeah, he did it two days ago, which is definitely within the time limit. Does anybody need more time to look over this PR? If, if anybody does not feel comfortable approving it, speak up and we'll let it go another week. But otherwise, it's been out there for a little while. So I'd like to approve it if everybody's okay with that. Any objection to approving? 
Okay, cool. We'll do that. Thank you, everybody. All right. I can't remember the status of this one, unfortunately. Hold on a sec. Oh, yeah, okay, I did it for this one. So this one, um, so the distributed tracing apparently has a rule that has our, I'm sorry, yeah, it has a rule that limits the character set of what you can use for these values. And equals is not part of that value set when I looked at the documentation. Um, so it seemed completely right to me. But does anybody else have a chance to take a look at it or disagree with this? Just so you know, the reason you can't use commas or equals, I think is because they're sort of like reserved characters because I think this is basically a comma separated list of things. So therefore, obviously a comma, you don't know whether it's part of the value or a separator and then equals because it's part of the you know, name value pair equal thing. I think that's why they made that rule. Any comments on this or objection to approving? All right, thank you. I believe that is it for the agenda today. Are there any other topics people would like to bring up? Okay, in that case, before people vanish, Manuel, I saw you, Klaus, I heard you. Falco, are you there? Oops. Falco? Yes, I'm here. Okay, I'm excellent, sorry. cool. Did I miss anybody else for the attendance? Doug M's here. Oh, hey, I'm sorry, I did notice you there. Sorry, Doug, I completely forgot about you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, anybody else? Okay, in that case, this call is over. If anybody would like to stick around for the SDK call, we'll start that up um, in about a minute or so. Assuming we have anything to talk about. It could be a very short call. But if you're interested, please stay on the line. Everybody else, thank you very much, and we'll talk again next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, we're down to nine people. All right, um, everybody ready to start or you wanna wait another minute? Okay, not hearing any objections. We'll go on and get started. Uh, Francesco, you were up first with some, something relative to the Java SDK. Do you wanna talk about that? Yeah, so basically I've started uh, creating a proof of concept with uh, the Java SDK and I found the that the APIs need a little bit of work or rework in my opinion. And I, and I, and I wish to contribute to it if uh, the maintainer agrees with it. Uh, so generally uh, I found that generics are quite painful now uh, because uh, when you need to write middleware, usually you don't, you, you don't need, you don't know and you don't care about the uh, sp uh, specification version and the payload that you pass uh, that is inside the event. So uh, having to fix those generics is it's quite a problem. Um, and also there is this JSON class, which needs a little bit of a rework too, because there are some methods missing, some methods that are quite hard to use. So uh, I, I would love to, to hear the comment of who maintains the the Java SDK and uh, I'll be really glad to, to work on it together with him, so. You, you did read Fabio's comment here, right? Uh, yeah, I, I was looking at this. Uh, 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 it, it, the point is that you don't need generics to be strong typed. I mean, like in, for example, in uh, Rust SDK, 
uh, we are creating a union type. Uh, uh, we are creating a union type for for being uh, strongly typed, and but at the same time we don't have, we don't have the pain of knowing in advance what's the cloud events version that you are ending when you read the event, which is the main problem that now the Java SDK has. So, yeah, I, I, I'll try to raise a couple of PRs for this, and yeah, I just wanted to to know the the comments of Fabio about. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I think he was, I think he was hoping to join the call, but then I think he got pulled away at the last minute. So that's why he left okay. the comments. Yeah. But I think he's definitely the main person that you're going to have to work with on that. Cause he's basically has been driving the, the Java SDK for the most part. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Also, also, he also raised a good points, like removing external dependencies, all these things. I completely agree with him. And mm -hmm. there is like, for example, there is the hybrid validator, which is, kind of useless because like for example when you create middleware uh, uh, sometimes you just don't need to, to validate because maybe you don't even know what is inside the event you just want to pass from one point to another so mm -hmm. right. and yeah generally that's 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 my comment about it okay um does anybody else on the call have any comments on this otherwise we'll let those those guys talk about it offline but I'll, if you're on the call you want to bring something up go ahead Okay, I guess not. Um, next is the REST SDK. Is there something you wanted to do to here or just make sure everybody's aware of it? Uh, no, just, I just want to let you know that we are working on this. Uh, it's uh, the, I think the guys that are working with me uh, didn't manage to join in this call. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, the, the work is starting. We have uh, planned the features that we want. Uh, now, now we are working on the data structure and then we will, so uh, the, the plan for the 0 0.1 is to have the data structure, uh, the JSON marshalling and marshalling, uh, support for uh, 0 0.3 and 1.0 version. And I think those are the most important features that we will have for 0 0.1. Then in the future releases, we will have the MQTT and, and, and HTTP because uh, they, they, they already have the MQTT logic and they, and they have the HTTP logic. So we will merge those two things. So did I hear you right that you're going to support more than just 1.0? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, we are going to support 0 0.3. Okay. Just out of curiosity, um, does anybody think that they have to support 0 0.3? So let me, pick, let me pick on Scott for a second here. Scott, would it be horrible if they did not support 0 0.3? I just don't want them to do work that may not be necessary. Uh, I don't think that that's uh, an unreasonable thing. But if you come in and you it's new and, you, and the bar is pretty high to go and back implement all of the wacky features we cut in the spec. As long as it's very clear that this thing's only going to work with 1.0 in the documentation. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind, Francisco, as you go forward, you know, you don't have to support anything but 1.0. Yeah. I kind of want to drop like 0.1 and 0.2 support in Go, to be honest. Yeah. The, those are really painful to support, frankly. <laughs> yeah. Especially 1.0 <laughs> I mean, because that, of the, all the name changes. We had to do a bunch of wacky stuff to make sure it all works. Yeah. Also, <laughs> there, there are also some tests that are flaky because point one and point two. So yeah, I I I mean I'm kind of keen on just deleting one zero and probably one two. You know, it's it's been released for a year now, right? I think it's time to move on. So the reason uh, to add point three, to be honest, is that we need somehow. Uh, two versions of the spec to understand how, how to design the data structure. Yeah, that, that's a really good <laughs> and that's, point. That's, yep. that, that's because, because uh, designing the data structure is not the main problem, but also uh, the, um, the logic to marshal and unmarshal that must be based on the spec version. So those are the reasons why we want, uh, why we, we decided, we agreed on the supporting point three. That's the only reason. That's a good reason, it's interesting. Yeah, I don't think a lot of the specs or a lot of the SDKs support the the same level of version compatibility that the the Golang one does. Yeah. Uh, I, okay. 
I used to update uh, now. Now that you remember me, I used to uh, to to do a PR for Python SDK to update it, but I think nobody uh, I think nobody merged it. And this PR contains support for point three and v one because now SDK Python supports only point one and point two. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so Fabio asked about, or I opened up, um, I'm sorry, added something here about Kafka headers. Um, Francesco, I think you were involved in this. In fact, you actually opened up, I guess, this issue as pull request. Let's see what you said here. So this is a change to the Kafka binding. So this, this basically just mandates that, that they're all just strings, right? So for now, yes, because uh, I mean, it could break a lot of things and, and it requires a new versioning of the Cloud Events uh, specification to have uh, another logic to, uh, I mean, to have another types. Right. I, I think the, uh, take this PR more like an hotfix. <laughs> Right. And I, I apologize. I, I completely forgot that you opened this pull request. Otherwise, I would have brought this up in the main call to draw everybody's okay. attention to it. No um, anybody have any comments on this? It seems reasonable to me, but to be honest, I, I know next to nothing about Kafka. So I, I'm not one to say. So uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I, will, I will prefer to have some more efficient encoding. But uh, it's something a little bit hard and we start touching some chords which needs to be agreed with several parties because then it, yeah, every every language should, should be able to simply implement this encode, the encoding logic and so on. Right. So for now, UTF-8 strings are fine. Okay. Scott, Klaus, or anybody else on the call, you guys have any thoughts on this? Okay, I'm gonna assume silence means no. <laughs> don't, I don't uh, know much about Kafka, so. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, in that case, is there anything else you guys wanna talk about? Uh, yeah, I want to add something. Yeah, please, go ahead. So, uh, there's so this is something that I brought up in uh, the Slack channel like a couple of weeks ago, I don't remember. Uh, which is about creating a new encoding strategy, a new encoding type for the HTTP binding. Uh, so basically now we have this batch, this batch which sends events uh, encoded uh, in a JSON array. So it's a JSON of JSONs. And I would love to explore uh, using multi-part uh, multi bodies to, to send multiple events. We actually talked about that at one point, and maybe you guys can remember, but I, I could have sworn one of the reasons we pushed back on that was, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's gonna sound like weird, but I think the argument was mainly from Clemens saying, multi-part mime is hard. I think that was the biggest reason. <laughs> well, I, don't know, I don't know whether that's completely true or not, but I think that, that's the only thing I can remember. Can you, can you guys, can you old timers remember what, what the reason was that we rejected that? I think it's because of the header issue. What? What? Oh, yeah. what? what you said? Or can you elaborate? Well, I, I don't. I thought the 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 issue was that uh, multipart doesn't get unique headers per per body. So that's not true because multi multipart has different uh, versions. So uh, has different types mime types uh, the form data allows only like uh, uh, the file name because it's uh, it's designed for file uploads but there are different multi part and there is and basically we can play around this to make uh, a by uh, to make a uh, an encoding which works i mean my question well, is are you interested on, on exploring this so what, what I would do is I would open up an issue asking about it because I could have, like I said, I, I think we talked about this before and we, we didn't have that, head down that path for a reason. I just can't remember for sure what the reason is, but if, if you open an issue, you'll force someone like Clemens 
to respond to the issue. And that will maybe trigger some people's memory in terms of why we said no in the past. And maybe those reasons no longer apply. I, I, I don't know. But if you can open an issue just to force the conversation, I think that'd be good. Okay. Okay. Um, hold on a minute. So this actually is an SDK issue, but it's a good question. Um, Oops. Uh, what, I know there, just, just to, before wrapping up, I know there a solution we could explore is JSON streaming, which is nothing more than doing, uh, that sending JSON uh, new line separated. That's, that's, that's another thing. I mean, maybe the, the right answer here is instead of calling it batch, we call it uh, event streams for HTTP and one can be multi-part and one can be uh, JSON streams. Uh, I don't know. I have no opinion. Frankly, on the name, I, I really don't care. <laughs> I mean, what, what I care is more uh, the efficiency because now uh, batch is extremely inefficient because it, it, you can send things like in binary, so sending the body, uh, it doesn't. It, it removes the the opportunity for doing a lot of uh, auto optimizations. Yeah, that's. Yeah. There's a bunch of other problems with it. That's why I never implemented it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, if you want to force that discussion again, you can, again open up another issue on that, and we can talk about it. I, I would not open a, I would not work on a pull request yet until you get some discussion mm -hmm. in the issue because I don't want to waste your time, but definitely open up an issue to force the discussion. Okay. 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 Cool. All right. Anything else you guys want to talk about? All right. Cool. In that case, we are done. Thanks, everybody, and we'll talk again next week. Actually, I, I should say for SDK, we'll talk in two weeks. Um, if for some reason you guys do want to have a call next week. Just, just ping me to, to and then we'll, um, I'll, I'll announce it to the group that, that we'll have a call, but usually we don't have enough topics to warrant a call every week. That's why it's every two weeks, but we definitely can if you guys have something you want to talk about. Okay. Actually, let's, let's plan that for at least the Golang one. Uh, you want one next week? Yeah, my, my plan okay. is I'm switching to um, cloud events full time for a couple weeks after this Knative release. Okay. In that case, what is the next one? March what? Doo -doo -doo. <clears throat> yeah, hmm. I'm going to the symposium. It's March 5th. You're going to be available for it? Uh, let me double check here. It's not next week, it's the following week. So yeah, we're good. Okay, and what's the topic again? You... Uh, uh, we're, we're gonna drive to V2. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll try to remember to send out a note to everybody to make sure they know that we will have a call next week. And it's, and, uh, it's not in two weeks. Cool. Anything else you guys wanna talk about? All right, cool. Thanks everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Later. Bye. Yes. Bye. 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 <laughs>